Of all the properties of an electron, spin has to be the most mysterious. The best way to capture its paradoxical nature is this. Imagine a spinning ball, except an electron isn't a ball and it's not actually spinning. But today I'm going to show you an experiment that proves electrons have intrinsic angular momentum. In the 1920s, Samuel Gutsmith and George Uhlenbeck were trying to explain a puzzling phenomenon called fine structure spectral line splitting. When they zoomed in on the emission lines of certain elements, they saw that these lines were split into even finer lines. They knew electrons orbited atoms. This explained why spectral lines split when an element was placed in a strong magnetic field. But what they couldn't explain was why, even without an external magnetic field, the spectral lines of some atoms were already split. The only explanation was that if each electron had an additional source of angular momentum, they proposed that electrons were not only orbiting the nucleus, but also spinning on their own axis. And since electrons are negatively charged, spinning them like a charged sphere should generate a magnetic field making each electron behave like a tiny magnet with its north pole pointing up or down. They coined the term electron spin and suggested that electrons were always spinning, either in one direction, spin up, or the other, spin down. This property was intrinsic to electrons. You can't take away their spin. It's built into their very nature. Electron spin turned out to be one of the most important discoveries in physics and chemistry. It explained how electrons fill atomic orbitals and why atoms bond the way they do. But there was a problem with this. If electrons were actually spinning, you could calculate how fast they'd need to rotate in order to create the observed magnetic field. The result? 1.5 times 10 to the 20 revolutions per second, 15 sextillion RPM. This was a problem. That's so fast the outer edge of the electron would have to be moving faster than the speed of light, which is impossible. Clearly something was wrong with the classical idea of an electron physically spinning. To reconcile this, scientists introduce a new concept, intrinsic angular momentum. Electrons don't actually spin, but they interact with the world as if they do. It's just a fundamental property of the electron, like having a negative charge. This is why electron spin is so mysterious. Every experiment we do confirms it acts like angular momentum, even though nothing is physically rotating. But how do we prove electrons have intrinsic angular momentum? That's where today's experiment comes in. This was first proposed by Albert Einstein and Wander Johansson de Haas, and it's now known as the Einstein de Haas effect. If electrons truly have intrinsic angular momentum, then that momentum must be conserved, just like regular angular momentum. Conservation of angular momentum is one of the most fundamental laws of physics. It's never broken. To demonstrate this, let's start with a simple example. Here I have a motor spinning a blade placed on a floating boat, so there's no friction to interfere. I've taped a petri dish on top of this so there's no contribution from air blowing from the fan. So it's just a spinning disc. Right now the boat isn't moving, meaning its total angular momentum is zero. But now watch what happens when I suddenly reverse the direction of the spinning blade. To compensate for this and keep total angular momentum conserved, the boat must start spinning in the opposite direction. And if I flip the blade back, then the boat stops again. This is so cool to see. This same principle applies to electrons. Even though we can't see electrons spinning, their intrinsic angular momentum has real physical consequences, just like the rotating boat. So now I'm going to replicate this same effect, but instead of flipping a fan blade, I'm going to flip electron spin. But before we continue, have you ever felt stuck in your job? Maybe you're burned out, underpaid, or struggling with work-life balance. Well, you're not alone. Millions of people are looking for a way out. But what if you could pivot into the tech industry, even with zero experience? That's where today's sponsor, Triple Ten, comes in. Triple Ten is a flexible, beginner-friendly online bootcamp designed to help people switch to high-paying, in-demand tech careers. With one of the highest job placement rates in the industry, 87% of graduates land a job in tech within six months. The program provides real projects with real companies, giving students valuable experience that stands out to employers. Plus, if you don't get a job, you get a 100% refund. 
Their courses fit into your schedule whether you're working full time, raising a family, or need a program that adapts to your lifestyle. So if you're ready for a career change, use my code ACTION for 30% off. And you can click the link in my description or scan the QR code for a free consultation today. Now let's get back to our experiment. So how do you actually flip electrons? Well remember, because electrons have spin, they also behave like tiny magnets. This means we can use an external magnetic field to flip their direction. Here I have a steel bolt. The iron in the bolt is ferromagnetic, meaning it contains unpaired electrons that align in domains, all pointing in the same direction. If I place this bolt in a magnetic field, I can get entire domains of electrons to flip their spin, just like flipping the direction of a spinning fan. In reality, individual electrons aren't flipping their spin from up to down. Instead, the entire atom rotates to align with the magnetic field, similar to the boat analogy. I didn't reverse the direction of the fan blades, I flipped the entire fan. But the result is that the angular momentum of the electrons is reversed. So what should happen if this happens? If electrons truly have angular momentum, then flipping their spin should cause the entire bolt to start rotating. Now in an atom, an electron's mass is tiny, only about 0.03% of the total atom's mass. So while each electron has a lot of angular momentum, it has to move a huge amount of mass. That means that the rotation of the bolt will be very small. To detect it, I'll hang the bolt from a string and attach a tiny mirror to it. Then I'll shine a laser onto the mirror and watch the reflection on the wall. Even a tiny movement of the bolt should cause the laser spot to shift. To damp any unwanted oscillations, I place some mineral oil at the bottom here. This prevents the bolt from continuously wiggling and twisting after each movement. If it's not there, it just kind of twists back and forth forever. Now I'm going to place two coils of wire around the bolt. By running an electric current through these coils, I can generate a controlled magnetic field. Importantly, this field only points up and down. It can't directly twist the bolt by itself. So if we see rotation, it must be due to the flipping electrons. Okay, let's try it. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa. It moves. That means that the bolt is twisting. This happened because trillions of electrons flipped their spin simultaneously, reversing their angular momentum. And just like flipping the direction of a fan blade spun the boat, flipping electron spin caused the bolt to rotate. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see the bolt actually rotating on the right here. Now if I reverse the current, the magnetic field flips, and sure enough, the bolt rotates in the opposite direction. This is so crazy. We're literally seeing a macroscopic effect of electron spin. What's even more amazing is that Einstein came up with this experiment before the discovery of electron spin. He originally designed it to demonstrate the orbital angular momentum of electrons. But when he did the experiment, the effect was much too strong, so they assumed there must be some additional angular momentum somewhere, but they didn't know what it was yet. Years later, electron spin was discovered, and that was the reason why it was twisting so much. This experiment is one of my favorite experiments because it takes something as abstract as quantum mechanics and makes it visible in the real world. Electron spin isn't just some theoretical concept, it's a real angular momentum that we can see a macroscopic effect of. Now if you do this experiment, be sure to use string that doesn't have a twist in it, because with that, if you pull down harder on it, it can twist by itself, so that wouldn't be due to the flipping electrons, it would be due to extra tension on the string. In my case here, something that worked really well was just dental floss, because it doesn't twist if you pull on it. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.